Mr. Frimpong, good morning. Good morning, it's, sir. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Um, I, I know we are, you're going to give us some background to the Boku um, um, conflict. Comfort. Yes, indeed. Yes. So, uh, yes, the floor is yours. What's on your mind this morning? Thank you. Yes, the Boko conflict. You know, first of all, let me say that the Boko is the town, in fact, the most northeastern municipality in Ghana and enjoys three diverse cultures. And everybody otherwise would have wished to be at Boko as a trader and for that matter as a tourist. First of all, to the eastern side of Boko is the Togo border. And you know, Togo was colonized by the Germans. Mm -hmm. So they have that German culture, you know, borrowed to Ghanaians through Boko. Then immediately up there, not the most, is Burkina Faso, which is French. And so it gives us a borough of a French culture. And then Boko itself being English colonized like the rest of the Gold Coast. So it's a very nice place, highly commercialized. Unfortunately, there's one thing that draws Boko back. And because of Boko, those who have studied conflict management can say that when you go to Nigeria, we have rebel activities. You go to uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ivory Coast, full-blown civil wars ever happened there. And then in the case of Ghana, and I'm saying because of Boko, we talk of communal violence. Mm -hmm. It is my prayer that, as doctor was saying, the year is soon to come to the middle. Before the end of the year, let us see a conflict free Boko that Ghana would 100% be an oasis of peace in the sub-region. Now, how did the trouble come about? Let's go to the Genesis. According to R.S. Rattray, you know, the trouble in the area originates from land ownership or allodial ownership of land or chieftaincy. These two that bring trouble to areas in particular in the north. And when it comes to chieftaincy, succession to chieftaincy and land ownership, the landmark has always been who came first. And almost all historians, anthropologists, sociologists agree that it was the Kusasi people who came first. In fact, I should have said, or I should have begun by saying that in the Boku area, the most dominant ethnic group is the Kusasi. And then the Mamprusi are a very small minority. In fact, originally they were from uh, Nalerugu, and that means the Mamprusi area, the capital of which is Nalerugu, under the Nairi of Mamprugu. Now these people, you know, living the Kusasi to the Mamprusi, these people uh, originated from a very ancient ancestor called Na Bewa. Na Bewa, we are told, came from either the Le Chad area or Zamfara mm -hmm. in the northern uh, Nigeria and settled along Pusega area in Ghana. After Na Bewa came his three sons who founded the Muli Dabani uh, kingdom, you know, one of which is uh, 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 Sitobu. Sitobu founded the Dagomba kingdom and then Tohugo founded the Mamprusi kingdom and then the other one the Nanumba which was founded by Matumba Matumbu now these people remained where they were until we are told that in the 17th century the Kusasi people who were anacephalous people anacephalous society were threatened by the Buzangas from Burkina Faso before I proceed, let me explain the meaning of a cephalo society. An acephalous society is a decentralized society, a society that is not <clears throat> organized under one centralized chief, as we have in Ashante especially. Those who have read Things Fall Apart will know that the Ibus 
were anacephalous people. Whenever there was trouble, Okonko and his people would come together, ward off the trouble. After that, everybody would retreat to their compounds and no one would hurt somebody. Everybody was the champion of the compound. In the case of the Kusas, it was the same. Led by the Tendana. The Tendana was the spiritual head of the land. And all that he did was that with the assistance of the family heads, he would pour libation and then consult the uh, land gods. So always they were revered in that manner. But his influence did not get to ruling or controlling anybody until, as I have said, in the 17th century when they were threatened, Natabia, eh, the Nairi Natabia, brought in troops to assist the Kusasi people. Having assisted them, they felt they had to stay. And so they stationed garrisons in places that Tanja, in Boko, and then Bindiri, all in the same environment. This helped them to augment trade, to protect the people, and to streamline communication between Boko and Narerugu. Soon the Nairi started sending in his sons, princes, to rule the Boko area. It didn't bother initially, it didn't bother the Kusasi people because they felt that they were cephalos, they were they didn't care about who was the chief. Mm -hmm. And then the Mampruces also restricted their chieftaincy to their own subjects who were trading there. So it, this was a pre colonial era and nobody had a qualm with anyone. So the relationship was not a master servant. It's like somebody who are giving you land to stay and then you to you protect him against external aggression. Then when in 1900 the British entered the place, first of all they sought to do direct rule for about 30 years and the Kusasi people did not like it because as I have said, they did not like all those who belong to Asafalo societies fear uh, overlordship. You know, they hate it because it's alien to them. So the British from 1931 decided to organize all these groups under one centralized authority, mm. reminding themselves of their own monarchy back home. And then also, as we all know, the indirect rule system that you govern the people through their own leaders. And because they could not find uh, leaders among the Kusasis, they felt that the most centralized people were the uh, Mampurisi people, so they should govern them. Uh, this was not something they would like. Those of us who have studied a little history will know that the Igbos were treated that way. The Igbos didn't know chieftaincy, and the British imposed Warren chiefs upon them, mm. and it led to so many deaths. That was the same thing that happened here. They imposed the Mampurisis upon the Kusasis, and this continued for as long as the British ruled the country. To a very high extent, a research showed that a section of the Kusasi people liked the idea because before the Mampurusis in Boko were made their overlords, they were directly paying tribute to the Nairi in Nalerugo. Mm -hmm. Look at the journey and uh, look at the, the heavy amount you needed to pay. And because of his deep influence, or every now and then, either he had a funeral or visitors, and you needed to contribute. Mm -hmm. But this one is living this together with you, mm -hmm. and his influence wasn't much. Still, they felt they should have been left on Hello. their own. Then 1957 comes. Now, do you, in the run-up to independence, we have two major parties. In the north, the first political party to be formed was the Northern People's Party, which later joined the National Liberation Movement to form the UP, United Party. You would know that because the UP came from the Ashanti Royal House, and the Ashantis have a direct relationship with the Moli Dabani people, the Mampurusi would align with the United Party. And because the Kusasis were cephalos, mass oriented naturally they will go to the cpp <clears throat> now after independence the uh, nkrumah government set up the afari commission you know to go into the whole chieftaincy system of the kusasi nanumba
people to find out whether the Kwisasis were to be encouraged to have their own chiefs so that they will move from an acephalous society to a chieftaincy society. They govern their own selves or to make the, uh, the new overlords, the late comers, to govern them. The Afrari commission, commission said no. The earlier was better because these people did not come to conquer the Kusasi people. It was, they were just invited. And so, therefore, if you are a chief, go to Naradugu, or when you are staying there, then the owners of the land should rule. These people were not satisfied. The Mampurisi was well satisfied and brought a national the high court and won. And when the case went on appeal, the decision was overturned. And at that time, the court of appeal was the highest court of the land. So the highest court of the land, having spoken, everybody was quiet and there was peace. I won't say relative peace. Peace. Because it wasn't a politician that had spoken, but the highest court of the land, the judiciary. Now comes 1966. Mm. Immediately after the mm. coup, Na Azoka defers. The Kusasi chief, the paramount chief, was deposed under NLCD 112. And it means that this NLCD 112 kicked against, uh, 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 do I say, if today we say Supreme Court decision. Mm. It kicked against it. It killed it completely. And so all that the Kusasis would do would just to wait until there had been a political change. So you see that it was from 1966, actually, that the whole conflict assumed a political nature. Then in 1983, the Kusasis were able to lobby the PNDC government to pass the PNDC Law 75, which resurrected the Court of Appeal decision of 1958. So the paramount chief belonging to Mampurisi group, Adam Azomiogo, was destroyed. And then the son of the late Azoka, who was Azoka II, mm. was enskinned. Uh, sorry, let me start it, put it very well. Mm. The late Azoka defers was posthumously recognized as the lawful paramount chief of the area because PNDC law 75 had also come to repeal NLCD 112. And as you are saying, posthumous, because he was dead, his son had to ascend the throne. And so from that day up to date, the conflict had been a political one. And then, as we have said, the new patriotic party is strictly followed and supported by the Mampusi people. And then the National Democratic Congress, their people are the Kusasi. And so if anybody would want peace in the area, I believe we have to start from the political top. You know, organize seminars for them, and then let them know that politics is not about the division of our people. It's not about intrusion into chieftaincy, but it is about proper governance, democracy. Help the people to develop themselves. Let the people know that whether you are Mampusi, Kusasi, Ashanti, Ewe, Nzema, Fante, we come together to form that entity called Ghana. And I believe when you kill somebody because someone wants to be a chief. I mean, it's, it can never be fair and it can never be supported anywhere. At the end of the day, let us wish that there will be peace and absolute peace in the Boku area. Thank you so much.